Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to provide a short demonstration of chi-square goodness of fit tests using SPSS. Before we get started let me note that underneath the video description you will find a link to the SPSS data file that I'm using in this video so you can download the data to follow along. Additionally you will find a link to a PowerPoint that provides additional information uh, and additional examples. Um, also included in the PowerPoint is a deeper dive with respect to interpretation of the output. So be sure to download that to learn more. So our example is uh, using data that was obtained by Pew Research Center from March of 2020. So essentially this was survey data. Uh, individuals from the U.S. population were surveyed. Uh, regarding various attitudes, social and political attitudes, as well as attitudes and beliefs related to COVID-19. And so what we're going to be focusing on in this demonstration are um, their, their uh, perceptions of COVID-19 as being a threat to personal health. So the variable that we're going to be working with in our data set is the COVID threat.ph variable and individuals could respond uh, to the, that particular question by indicating whether they believed that COVID-19 was not a threat to personal health, a minor threat to personal health, or a major threat to personal health. So what we're going to be uh, hypothesizing in this example is that the proportion of the U.S. population who viewed COVID-19 in March of 2020 as not a threat was 0.35, as a major threat 0 0.40 and as a uh, as a major threat 0.25 and I do want to mention that these are just sort of arbitrary uh, proportions that I've picked this is not based on any kind of substantive um, theory or research or anything of that nature this is just to demonstrate this uh, particular procedure but in uh, real applications you would typically have some uh, substantive basis for laying out these hypothesized or expected proportions so here we have our data opened up in SPSS and we are going to be working with this variable here, COVIDThreat.ph. If I go under variable view, you'll see that the variable is uh, uh, designated as ordinal. You'll see that under values right here, uh, the values are 1, 2, and 3. So a value of 1 is associated with a major threat, value of 2 with a minor threat, and a value of 3, not a threat. So those are the three response options that uh, uh, participants uh, were able to give. So what we're going to do is uh, first just take a quick look at the frequencies associated with those three categories. So I'm going to go to analyze, go to descriptive statistics, and then click on frequencies right here. Uh, just so you can see it, I'm going to move uh, the COVID threat variable to the variables box here. Uh, and if you want a uh, bar chart, you can certainly ask for that just by clicking under charts, go to bar charts right there. You have the option of frequencies or percentages along the y-axis. I'll just select percentages and uh, click on OK. So looking at our output, you can see that in terms of the uh, frequency counts, those are given in this column right here and the percentages uh, are given right here. If you happen to have missing data though, you wouldn't want to use uh, these percentages. You'd want to use the valid percent column that you see here. But you can see that uh, in general, 23.5% of the uh, respondents indicated that COVID-19 was a major threat. 55.3% indicated it was a minor threat and 21.2% indicated that it was not a threat. And um, just kind of scrolling down, there's your uh, bar chart. So you can see that proportionally most of the uh, citizens indicated uh, that they believe that COVID-19 is a minor threat. So now let's generate our chi-square results. So what we're going to do is go to analyze, go down to non-parametric tests. There are actually a couple of ways that we can generate this. I'm going to focus in on this one right now. Uh, so we'll go through legacy dialogues, chi-square, and this box will open up. And so we'll move our uh, COVID threat variable to the test variables box. And then down below where it says expected values, we are going to click this button for values. And we're going to in, uh, include the proportions that are associated with those categories on the COVID threat variable. Now, it's extremely important to keep in mind that uh, the proportions that you add in need to align with the ordering in which those values appear on the COVID threat variable. So really quickly going back to our COVID threat variable, remember that we had minor threat that was coded one, followed by, uh, excuse me, a major threat coded one, minor threat coded two, and not a threat coded three. So we need to order the proportions in uh, 
uh, or put those proportions into uh, the, the um, box in that order. So we're going to go ahead and type in those proportions. So the first proportion we indicated uh, that we were expecting for the major threat category that was uh, 0.25 and so then we add that right there so we just click the add button. Next for the minor threat category the expected proportion was 0 0.40 so next I'm just going to uh, remove this and just uh, type in 0 0.40 and click on add and then finally for the not a threat group we're going to uh, type in 0.35 so that's basically all there is to it we'll click add right there and then click on OK and you can see that now we have our chi-square results that are given so you can see uh, under the frequencies table you can see these are the observed ends these are the same ends that we had uh, seen previously in the uh, table above or the, the previous output you can see that we have the expected end so these are the expected frequencies given the proportions that we uh, were hypothesizing in the population and then the residual column right here is just simply taking the observed uh, frequencies and subtracting the expected frequencies so this is uh, you could think about the residual as essentially representing the lack of, con of congruence between what was uh, observed in the data and what was expected. So then when we go down to the test statistics you can see that we have our chi-square value that's given right here. Uh, the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of of uh, response categories minus one so we had three groups so uh, that's why we have two degrees of freedom right there and then we have down here the p-value that's given and so conventionally if we use the conventional alpha 0.05 um, th if the p-value is less than or equal to that then we would reject the null and infer that there's a, a significant discrepancy between the observed and the expected uh, proportions or you could also by extension say the ex, uh, observed and expected frequencies. So you can see right here that we have statistical significance uh, given so that's going to be an indication that our expectations were uh, rather off because there's a discrepancy between what we observe in, in the data and what we expected. Now it's worth noting that because significance tests or the power of significance tests are, are impacted not only by the um, effect size but also by sample size, uh, you might want to uh, compute an effect size measure in order to judge the uh, magnitude of the discrepancy between the observed and expected uh, proportions. So an index that you can use is Cohen's omega right here and this is simply uh, computed by taking the square root of the chi-square value which is this value right here to the uh, total sample size which is n right here. So when we do this the Cohen's omega value is 0.337 and if we use Cohen's benchmarks for judging uh, effect size uh, where uh, small is equal to 0 0.10, medium is equal to 0 0.30, and large is equal to 0 0.50, we would judge the magnitude of the discrepancy from the null uh, being described as medium. Additionally, if we want to determine uh, which of our expectations were more uh, off, uh, what we can do is we can actually generate standardized residuals, uh, which is essentially taking the, the um, unstandardized residuals in this column and dividing it by the square root of the expected uh, frequency count right here. And so you can see uh, the formula is just basically taking the observed n minus the expected n and then dividing it by the square root of the expected n. So basically we can uh, generate standardized residuals for each of our categories. So there's the standardized residual for the major threat category, the standardized residual for the minor threat category, and then the standardized residual for the not a threat category. And what we're looking for is or what we're trying to do is to test whether there's a significant difference between the observed uh, proportions and the expected proportions so um, or if you want to uh, think about it in terms of the difference in observed uh, frequencies and expected frequencies that's fine too so a simple rule of thumb is just to uh, utilize uh, 1.96, either positive or negative 1.96, as a threshold for, 
for judging that there's a significant difference uh, in between the proportions that are observed and expected in your data. So you can see right here that for the major threat uh, category, there's there's not a significant difference between what's observed and what's expected. For the minor threat, you can see that there is a significant difference between what's observed and expected. And then for the not a threat group, uh, you can see that there's a significant difference as well. Okay, so now I, I will say that there's, an, I, I mentioned that there's another route that you could generate these results. Um, so if you go to analyze, you go down to non-parametrics again, if you click on one sample, this is the second route that you could theoretically obtain your results. So what we'll do is we'll click on customize analysis, then click on fields right here. And actually, I'm, I'm going to move all of these variables over to the uh, fields box and just leave the COVID threat variable in the test fields box. Next I will click on settings and then I will click on customize tests and then go down to compare observed probabilities to hypothesize chi-square tests. So then when I click on the options box you can see that this will allow me to uh, generate uh, or to uh, customize the expected probabilities so I'm gonna, for each group. So I'll click on customize expected probabilities. So for category one that's the first value on our variable the relative frequency was expected to be 0.25 so I'm gonna uh, go to the relative frequency box and type in uh, uh, 0.25 and then we'll go to the next category, so I'll type in a 2 right there. That one was 0 0.40. And then we'll uh, do the third one, which was 0 0.35. 0 0.35. Oops, 0 0.35 there. And just keep in mind that uh, under category, these should be the uh, values for the associated with those uh, categories, the numeric values that are associated with the category. So we happen to have one, two, and three for those uh, values. So next we'll click on OK. And then we'll go ahead and click under uh, test options and you'll see that there's a significance level is given as 0 0.05. That's a conventional uh, alpha level. If you want to reset that in some way, you can certainly do that just by using this little, these little arrows to, to, to uh, toggle back, you know, across these different uh, uh, possible values of it. So next up, we will click the run button and it takes a second but so you can see now that we have our we have our results so you'll notice in this particular output you'll notice that it gives it says the null hypothesis uh, the categories of COVID threat occur with the specified probability so those are the um, so the the probabilities that we are are the uh, proportions that we observe in our data uh, correspond with uh, what we expected. So the test is given is one sample chi-square test and you can see that there it says statistically significant and they even give you a little uh, decision this is based on the significance level that we had set uh, uh, during that last menu. And uh, next as we kind of scroll down you'll see that we have the results from our chi-square test. These are the same ones as before. And then you can also see as we scroll down a little bit further, we get a uh, bar chart and you can see the relatives or the frequencies are given along the y-axis and you can see the observed uh, frequencies are in blue. The, re the reds give you the hypothesized or expected frequency. So you can see that there's not much of a difference uh, between the observed and expected frequencies for the uh, major threat group but you see substantial differences for minor threat and for not a threat. And those findings correspond to what we found before with our uh, test involving the standardized residuals. Um, and then finally what I want to uh, show you is just another way in which the output can be presented to you. So this, uh, if we go under the edit and go under uh, options right here, uh, if we click under output you can see it says pivot tables and charts so that's the output display if you moved it to model viewer we can just take a quick look to see what it's going to look like we'll click on OK and uh, go ahead and rerun the analysis using the same specifications as before and this is what it looks like so it says non-parametric test it gives you the summary of the uh, test result which is given uh, right up here uh, during our last run so it's giving you the same thing there now the rest of the information appears to be hidden but if you double click on this for hypothesis test summary you'll see that we get a model viewer box 
Uh, so on the left, in the left panel, you see our, our test results that are given the, the summary view. Uh, there's a little drop down, there's nothing else that's going to be showing right there, but on the right you can see it looks a little nicer in terms of the uh, output, uh, but you can see right there there's our bar chart that was given. Um, you can see if you uh, move your cursor over uh, these right here, or rather the bars themselves, you'll see that you get the observed count, see hypothesized count, and then the residuals. So you can see that's for the uh, COVID threat being a major threat, uh, then you've got it for the minor threat, and then you've got it for the not a threat. And then finally down below you can see that we have the chi-square test statistic, the degrees of freedom, and then there's a p-value as well. Okay, so that uh, pretty well concludes this demonstration, and I appreciate you watching.